Today's message is the spirit of leadership. We have been on a series on celebrating the spirits of just men made perfect. And um, we have been reading extensively from Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22 to 24. And I'll read that very quickly again. And the Bible says, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. To the heavenly Jerusalem. You can read it with me if you like. In fact, I would like you to read it with me. To an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. Who are registered in heaven. To God, the judge of all. To the spirits of just men made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Amen. So we've looked at those phrases. We started by celebrating God and celebrating the God of Zion. In this series, at this point in time, we are ending the series today. I mean this week. Uh, on Wednesday we'll be ending it finally. But we want to say that what we are learning here is just really starting to understand what Zion is all about. The Bible says it is the city of the living God. And when you come to Zion, when you come to the church, the body of Christ, he said you have come to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn. He said in that place that there are some spirits. It's called the spirit. We, we talked about angels. He talked about the innumerable company of angels. And if you remember earlier on in the series, we looked at angels, how they guide, how they protect, and how they do the different things to minister to us. Now, one of the things he said in that place we've just read is that you have also come to the spirits of just men made what? Perfect. And we talked about these people, that they are the people that have gone before us. That's verse 23. They are the people that have gone before us. He said, we've come to God, the judge of all. When we come to God, he judges every situation and makes sure that in your life, only his righteousness is ruling, only his righteousness is reigning. Anything the enemy is decreeing against you, he decrees against he is the judge of all. He is the one who vindicates you. He is the one who says that you can no longer be accused. He is the one who says that your life is no more what it used to be. Even though the devil will be saying it's still what it is, it's still what it used to be. God, the judge of all, is the one who says, no, this is a redeemed. This is a brand plucked out of the fire. This one has been set free. This one has been made whole. You can no longer torment him with his failures of the past. That is what the judge of all does. But part of the provisions he makes to us in Zion is that he makes us connect to the spirits of these just men made perfect. Who are these people? These are the people that have gone before us. People who have lived a life of a legacy. People who walked with God, encountered God, and operated some elements of the spirits of God that made them excel in their times. We talk about people like David. People like Jacob, people like Isaac, Abraham, people like Noah. We talk about great men of God like Peter, like Samson, and all these people who God put his spirit on. And uh, we say these people were not perfect. I just mentioned Samson. We all know that Samson was not a perfect person in mannerism and in morality. But the truth is he was a person who was ordained of God to be a judge of Israel. Men and women like Joseph, Moses, David, Esther, Peter, and others manifested the spirit of leadership. Leadership is the God-given ability to serve others. Say it to me, leadership, leadership. is the God-given ability to serve others with unique giftings. You have a set of unique giftings that nobody else on the planet has. There, is, there are things that you can do, believe it or not, that the way you do it, out of the 7 billion, circa 7 billion people on earth, no one else can do it exactly the way you do it. The truth is no man is an island. The truth is no man can be irreplaceable. But every man is unique. This is one of the reasons why our fingerprints and our um, eye, iris are all unique to us. This is why we can have biometric passports these days. When I was a little boy, passports were like uh, textbooks with very hard covers, and they used to stick the, 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 passport, the, the passport photographs on them. 
and they will put it on with, with glue and stick it on. And uh, you sign and all that. It used to look like a booklet that big. Now passports are gradually reducing. A time will come we will no longer have booklets at all. You will not carry anything. You will just appear before a machine. And it will, it will decode your, your visa status and everything about you just by looking into a machine. Because technology has gone so advanced to be able to code into your personal, unique, physical characteristics everything else that can be ascertained to you. Today we have them on biometric cards, but very, very soon we will no longer need anything because you already carry your God-given identification from heaven. This is why you must understand how unique you are. Now, there are certain gifts that God has coded into that your uniqueness. What he says about leadership is for you to be able to understand those gifts and be able to serve others with it. This is what leadership is all about. It's not about dominating people. It's not about being a macho. It's not about commanding. Because our world system portrays leaders because of their visionary characteristics, their charisma, the ability to motivate, the ability to organize, the ability to do those things, it denotes them as chauvinistic. It denotes them as people who have to manipulate people or people who have to sort of lord it over people. But that's not God's design. God's design has never meant for people to be autocratic. He had never meant for people, in fact, he wants people to be theocratic. He wants people to take responsibility from him and then pass on that responsibility to others by leading people as we will soon see in the stories that we'll be looking at this morning very briefly. When he was trying to explain leadership to his disciples, he said something in Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 from verse 42. You know, before this time, I can quickly give you a few verses before now. He gave an account of James and John who were brothers who came to Jesus and said to him, Master, can you do something for us? He said, what? He said, anything we ask you, can you do it? Jesus said, okay, ask me what you want. You know, and uh, they said, can it, is it possible that you can grant us the opportunity to go with you to your kingdom, the two of us? They forgot about the other ten who were also disciples with them. Can you imagine that? But the full account given by Matthew and others is that their mom was the first that, to, that asked that question. But it shows the individualistic nature of human beings. They said one should sit at your left, one should sit at your right when you get to your kingdom. And he said to them, he said, look, you guys, are you able to drink of the cup that I am drinking and to go undergo the baptism, the kind of suffering I am going to undertake? Are you able to? They said, we can do all that. Then he said, actually, you can and you will. But for you to sit where you want me to be, for you to be glorified in the way you want me to glorify you and confirm now, is only left to the Father. Because only the Father knows how he has put everything in everybody to be able to occupy their rightful places in glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Jesus said to them, so that was the discourse before now. Now, when the other ten, of course, trust Peter, he cannot hear that kind of thing and keep quiet. He said, what do these guys mean? They're getting away with this thing. Jesus is already agreeing with them that they can, they can be baptized and all that. So he said they were very upset with him. Now Jesus now called all of them. Verse 42. Read it with me. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. Somebody say over the Gentiles. These are the non-believing people, non-kingdom people. He said their principle is that they lord it over them. He said, and their great ones exercise what? Authority over them. Verse 43. Yet, say with me, yet. Okay, read it together now. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be what? Slave of all. Why? Because he too is doing it by example. Verse 45, read it with me. For even the Son of Man, that's he himself, Lord Jesus Christ, did not come to be served, but to what? To serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is what leadership is all about. Being ready to serve others, being ready to die for the sake of serving others. It is a spirit of leadership that makes you dare things. 
Because there is a uniqueness of an understanding of a gifting on your inside. That single penguin that took the dive saw something that others could not see. Had a motivation that others could not have. And God would rely on him to take that bold step. To do that singular act that could cost him his life. But with the conviction that it will not. So that he can lead others to follow. This is why we must understand that in the grace for leadership, it has nothing to do with position. It is all about being able to conscientiously know what God has entrusted into your hands and deploying it accordingly. Leadership has nothing to do with age, has nothing to do with money, even though those things can play a role. Leadership has much more to do with the ability to take on the responsibility that is God-given. Somebody said responsibility is a, is a combination of two words. Response and ability. So a leader takes responsibility by making every step to respond to their ability every time. It is said that your potential is what God gives to you. But your own gift back to God is what you do with it. God puts in everyone a potential to be great. Everyone a potential to make a difference. No matter how small. Everyone. You must understand that as a leader, you are not to be a Lord overall. You are a person who is meant to serve. The gifting that God has given you should help you serve others. Should help you serve humanity. Should also help you to learn from others. In every seed is a tree. Blessed be his soul. Brother Miles Monroe taught these principles for years. 30 years of ministry, he kept on telling the world, in every seed is a tree, and in the tree is seed, in every seed. And he went all the whole world talking about it. But he taught us about the power of potential. In every one of you here are things that God has put there with an ability to become mightier than you can think or imagine. It takes the spirit of leadership to take ownership of those things and deploy yourself and be a blessing to mankind. So in every seed is a tree, in every boy is what? Thank you very much. In every girl is what? And in every man is a potential to be a what? Father. And in every woman is a potential to be a what? Every one stage of life has a potential to give birth to the next thing. Every one stage. Because the moment you become a father, automatically that means you are a potential to become a grandfather. <laughs> Amen. And so life continues to grow as God has put inside you ability. Just like in every fish is the ability to swim at various depths. It is the same way that there is the potential for every bird to fly at various heights. Thank you. Every one bird has a potential to fly. Pigeons will fly, but they don't fly as high as eagles. Eagles have a bigger potential to fly. This is why not everyone will be a prime minister. Not everyone will be a leader at prime ministerial level. Not everyone will be a big time entrepreneur that will employ thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. Not everyone. You know why I don't stress over the work of the ministry or any assignment God gives me? Because I find that there are people who are doing it 50 times over and they don't have two heads. If you cannot manage a church of 200, 250 people and people are sat over churches of 50,000 at a go and their head is still one, not two. Then there must be something wrong with you if you're having stress with 200 people. <laughs> Does it make sense? God puts potential. The, the level you are in is the potential you have. And as you continue to grow in God and stretch further, God begins to expand it the more. You may be running a one-man business today, employing only yourself, and even find it difficult to pay yourself. <laughs> but you know something? God has put inside you a potential for something to become an employer of many, many people. You just need to continue to exercise the spirit of leadership. You continue to need to let the, the spirit of leadership that comes from God be your portion. The same way those birds can fly at various heights is the very same way that God makes sure that we also can operate our ability to lead in various, various degrees. So when we talk about the spirit of leadership, we're talking about the spirit of the Lord. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of leadership. It came upon Jesus Christ. It helps people to, to undertake the various roles of leadership God has called them into. It enables a leader to walk in the knowledge of their potential. When you don't know, you walk in darkness. 
Jesus spoke, speaking in uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 39. He spoke these words. The Bible says, and he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into the ditch? What that simply means is that as a leader, you must be endowed with the spirit of seeing what others do not see. There is no way a church or an organization can go anywhere if the leader is not having a vision. If the leader is not seeing things, what drives a people, what moves a people from the land of bondage to the land of promise is vision. Somebody was told that there is another land that is separate from the land of bondage. And the role of that person called Moses was to go back and tell those ones in bondage that there is another land, a better land, flowing with milk and with honey. And he told them that he was going to give it to them. The people who were in bondage were arguing because they could not see. And he had to convince them to see. And once they were able to see, they started to move with him. And as they were moving along, spying out the land, many of them were still doubting. It takes an envisioned mind to be an effective leader. You must be convinced about what you are seeing at every stage of your life. Otherwise, you will lose your ability to lead at whatever degree. The word darkness is synonymous with ignorance in the book, in the language of Hebrew, in the Hebrew language. So is light, synonymous with knowledge. Jesus operated by this spirit. He came into the temple when he was to start his ministry in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to do what? To heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim what? Liberty to the captives and, uh, please read this one very carefully with me. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to who? The blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. One of the cardinal things Jesus came to do is to give recovery of sight to the blind. To enable those who are meant to lead. Those who are meant to lead in various facets. Those who are meant to lead in various sectors. To enable them to lead by sight. That is the sight that God gives to them. Not for them to also remain blind so that they, can, uh, they will be in a situation where they cannot lead others. Because he said the blind cannot lead the blind. May God grant you sight in every area of your life. May God grant you vision for every ability he has put inside you. In the name of Jesus. Potential is nothing if we don't work it. You can talk about a dream from now till eternity and nothing will happen. As long as it's a dream on your inside, as long as it's a vision God has given you, you have to continue to present it to God and desire that God will show you. That is why when we sang that song, it was so apt that God will show you his ways concerning it. There is a way for everything. I said there is a way for everything. God has a path and a blueprint for every aspect of your life. You may not be able to see it. The problem with us in our generation is that we limit how we operate to what we see others do. Somebody starts a business. If you come from a particular country that I will not mention. Somebody starts a business now on this street. And everybody's flocking to the place. Maybe it's a restaurant. Like my wife had a restaurant about 15 years ago in, in one, one country. And uh, not this country. And um, it was nice. You saw cars parked there every time. And uh, I remember going there. I was, uh, you know, just uh, doing some other kind of work and, and, and business at that time. And also in ministry. And I remember parking there in the afternoons. I'll go into one of the inner rooms and I'll pray and say, Lord, we thank you for this glorious business. It's thriving. It's thriving. They didn't know the engine that was running that thing. They thought it was a beautiful place. It was a lovely place. Very nice. The governor of the state of that particular time used to send his aides to come and collect food there. Somebody that has food to be cooked in government house would ask for food to be brought to him from that restaurant. So I would pray and come against all demonic forces and all those things and pray for favors. And as I come out of my chambers, you just see people flocking in and so many things happening. The workers would have prayed in the morning. It was a lovely environment and we really enjoyed it. But you know something? Before we knew it, across the street, 
Somebody did up their own building. <laughs> they did up their own building, put up all the nice signs and flashing neon lights and all these things that welcome people all over the place. Mirrors on the walls, lovely place, they did it. And uh, they thought it, it had to do with how you beautify the place. <laughs> so the cars were not parking there. And they took offense at us. So they, so they felt that one thing they must do more is to try to get any of our staff to become their, their persons. And so they were luring them. They would ask them, how much do they pay you there? And they tried to top it up and so on. So I was a bit worried. I called my wife. I said to her, I said, this is not good, you know, that they want to steal some of our, our, our intellectual, uh, <laughs> even though I wasn't contributing anything other than prayer. <laughs> they want to take some of our blueprint. You know what she said to me? That I would never forget. She said, you know something? Unless they come and steal me, <laughs> nothing can change here. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Unless, unless they take you, everything else around you does not matter. Because what is in you, nobody can steal. Nobody can take. So keep your vision, keep it real, keep it active, protect it, celebrate it, because there is something about it that is unique to you. And you know, for them to steal it, they have to steal God. Because it's God that put it there and is protecting it for you. God did not give anybody a vision because of them. This is why he protects vision. Vision is always about other people. It's always about other people. So God is always interested in people. So the first thing he will tell you when he's giving you a vision is how you can benefit people. Any vision that is not going to benefit people has not come from God. Whatever vision it is, whether it's a church, whether it's, a, it's, a, it's an organization that's just going to produce things, it must produce a service that will advance people. This is why believers who should be the ones that are running the social media at the levels of the likes of the Facebooks and the Yahoos and the Googles, the believers that should be operating at those levels refuse to operate. So God is looking for people who are ready to have the capacity to run such things that will benefit people. Social media, no matter what you say, is one of the best things that has ever happened to mankind. It's one of the best things. The world of aviation and all these things. God is looking for people who are ready to put services that will benefit people. This is why we must not bottle in our leadership cap capacities. We must not let our leadership potentials go to waste. There was a time, as I bring, it, bring this to a close, there was a time Joshua was to take over from Moses. And um, in Numbers chapter 27, Moses was saying to the Lord, in verse 15, then Moses spoke to the Lord saying, verse 16, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. What is the work of the man? Read verse 17 with me. Who may go out where? Before them. That's the work of the leader. He must step out before the people and go in before them. Who may do what? Lead them what? Out. Lead them out and bring them in. Always out of where they are suffering, where they are confused, where they are in pain. Always into what God wants for them. When God told me about this work and he said, raise for me a people of purity, of power, of purpose and prosperity. It was very clear. That's why I've been singing it. And for the life of this ministry, that will be my song. And that will be our song. Amen. Amen. I knew it very clearly that God was going to be doing fantastic things in the area of purity. People breaking off habits, people finding themselves walking in purpose, people discovering things that are mind-boggling. We had many testimonies here on, on, on Victory Prayer Night. People walking in, people paying bills of thousands without knowing how God was providing the money and they were not cheats. People having their cases revisited. When they did not even expect that the, the, the thing can be sorted again, it was revisited and they're calling them in for favors of things that should be their portion. We had a testimony of mortgage being paid off in two years in this place. You can never ever, this is what gives me joy. When I was hearing those testimonies, I was ticking the boxes. I said, Lord, you have started the great work. Lord, you have started the great work. Because the people of purity, of power, purpose, and prosperity will have evidences to show. Some of our brethren here testified how they work and God blessing, meeting their needs in different ways beyond what they can put on pen and paper. I tell you, friends, a vision has life in itself. You must understand 
that you might be saying to yourself, but who am I? I don't have anything. I can't set up something big or whatever. No, all he's saying is that there is an ability inside you. Your ability must be, may be, just to be able to speak a word of encouragement to somebody else. And it's a unique gift that you have. The first time I counseled a couple who were going through marriage problems, I was 19. Yes, 19, not 90. <laughs> I was 19 years old. And uh, the man was just, he just got married about six months. Though I was 19, I was already in university and I was almost close to graduating because I told you I graduated at 20. And um, the man was uh, about to divorce his wife of six months. And I called him. I said, he was about six years older than me. I said, brother, you can't do this. He said, why? I said, the Bible says it's wrong. He said, what do you know? He said, you're, 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 just, a, you're just a kid. You don't know anything. I said, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with what I know. You need to be patient with this woman. You need to just understand that God has a plan for your life. And everything God put in my mouth that day, I was saying it. That marriage was saved and today they have many children. I don't know how many. Maybe they even have grandchildren because I was, like I said, I was just 19. But you know something? It was not something that I just found or something that I just wanted to work out mechanically. It was an ability God put inside me to be able to you manifest that gifting. Since that age, by the grace of God till today, I have been working on marriages different ways, different countries, different races. And people that by the grace of God I can look at today and say to the glory of God, at one point or the other, there was a big of a turmoil. But we stand together and we let that ability express itself. And then we see God walk in different ways. You know something? If you don't let your ability come through, you will rob a generation of the blessings that God has put inside them. Don't wait until you have this big organization that has your name to it. And they call it Brother BYC, PLC. <laughs> don't wait for that to happen just step out in the realm you are now let the spirit of leadership come upon you Moses said to God I pray that you bring us somebody who will bring them that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd and verse 18 the Lord said to Moses take Joshua the son of Nun with you a man in whom is what a man in whom is the spirit. A man in whom is the spirit. It's very important. That is the spirit of leadership. The Holy Spirit, yes, but the spirit of leadership. Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you. A man in whom is the spirit of leadership. When the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 6, when the deacons, the first set of deacons over the church were to be appointed, he said, take these people, the people who have in them the spirits of God. The spirit of God. So there is a spirit inside you. I said there is a spirit inside you. I said there is a spirit inside you. And the inspiration of the almighty God will give you understanding. That's Job chapter 32 verse 8. There is a spirit inside you. It is called the spirit of leadership. It comes by, it is activated by the spirit of the Lord coming upon you. The Bible says, take Joshua and do what? Lay your hand on him. Why? Set him before Eliezer the priest and before the congregation. Eliezer was meant to be his intercessor in those days. In our, do, in our days, we intercede directly. We speak to God directly. The Bible says, set before him Eliezer the priest, before all the congregation, and do what? Inaugurate him. Put him in place in their sight. This is how God will be locating you in your places of leadership. In your family, in your business, in your ministry, in this church. This is how God will be locating you in the places of leadership, in the places of responsibility. I can't hear you say amen. In the name of Jesus. And then look at what he said. This is something every leader must recognize. And you shall give him some of your authority to him. And you shall give some of your authority to him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. You had it in the course of the powerful charge. Every leader must have a leader. Every leader, say with me, every leader, every leader. must have a leader. Woman, in that home, you lead your children. You do everything. They should listen to you. But you have a leader. You know who he is. I know you don't like it, but that's the truth. He's your leader. He's your leader under God. And men, you know very well, you are not the final authority 
All these matters of the buck stops here. It doesn't stop there. The buck doesn't stop with you. Take responsibility for your home as a father, but the buck doesn't stop with you. The buck stops with who? Almighty God, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of the family. Let every one of us understand that leadership is all about submission first in order to be able to deploy your abilities and giftings in the way God wants it to be. And I pray that God will be raising in this place leaders. Leaders of integrity. Leaders of purpose. Leaders of prosperity. Leaders of power. Leaders of purity. In the name of Jesus.